How do Washington's word choices illustrate his point of view? In this lesson, you will learn to identify an author's point of view by identifying and explaining important word choices. So let's review. We remember that in order to analyze word choice, we will begin by diving back into the text for a second read. As we read over the text for a second or sometimes a third time, we're noticing the choices that the author is making. Chapter 1 of Booker T. Washington's Up From Slavery details early life as a slave and then his transition to being a freedman with the conclusion of the Civil War. So step 1 is to reread your selection and notice word choices that the author uses to talk about the main idea. Step two is to brainstorm what those words make you think of and what kind of a perspective a person who uses them would have. Step three is when you ask yourself, what is the author's point of view? So first things first. In order to answer the questions of how Washington's word choices illustrate his point of view, I need to dive back into the text and reread, noticing word choices that the author uses to talk about the main idea. So here we go. My life had its beginnings in the midst of the most miserable, desolate, and discouraging surroundings. This was so, however, not because of my owners, excuse me, not because my owners were especially cruel, for they were not, as compared with many others. I was born in a typical log cabin, about 14 by 16 feet square. In this cabin, I lived with my mother and brother and a sister till after the Civil War, when we were all declared free. So as I'm looking for word choices, I'm not going to go for these typical on-the-surface descriptors about the log cabin where he grew up. I'm looking for juicier words that are going to give me more information. So I'm really noticing words like miserable, desolate, and discouraging. To me, those words are, are, are under the surface. They're going to give me more information about his point of view. So my next step now is to be thinking what do these words tell me about the author so here are those words i've picked out and now i'm going to be brainstorming let's see this first word miserable to me that's really a sophisticated way to say sad or depressed and now on to the second word desolate desolate says to me alone and lonely but again it's really fancy language and this third term, discouraging, I'm noticing the alliteration between desolate and discouraging. And then, of course, the meaning of the word discouraging is, is losing courage. So now that I've got a brainstorm on my sticky note, I'm thinking to myself, what does this brainstorm tell me about the author's point of view? So here's my brainstorm. Here's my question. And let's see if I can answer that question. So, Washington is a sophisticated, well-educated man who feels great sadness about his life as a slave. And you see, I took those adjectives, sophisticated and well-educated, directly from my brainstorm about those terms that he used um, in, in that paragraph we reread. So, so you can see exactly where this all came from. So what we've just done is we reread our selection, noticing word choices that the author uses to talk about the main idea. We brainstormed what the word makes you think of and what kind of perspective a person who uses them would have. And then we asked ourselves, what is the author's point of view? In this lesson, you have learned to identify an author's point of view by identifying and explaining important word choices.